Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Saving Data in iOS video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, you'll be learning how to work with XML, the bread and butter of the internet. Parsing XML in iOS is handled by the NSXML parser class. This is a lightweight event-based parser that unfortunately is read-only. More on this later. This parser is known as a SACS parser, which, which stands for Simple API for XML Parser. It's a fast parser that you will tune based on the feed you are parsing. Whereas a DOM-based parser builds your XML structure in memory, a SACS-based parser fires event while parsing an XML document. For instance, an event is fired every time the parser enters a new XML node. NSXML parser takes a delegate and it's up to you to determine what events you'll respond to. Unfortunately, NSXML parser does have some cons to it. It does not perform any validation on your XML. This means if your XML has a validation error in it, XML parser will not validate it before parsing. As mentioned, NSXML parser is a read-only parser. You can't modify the XML using it, nor can you write it to disk. All you can do is read the XML. Also, NSXML parser does not care about the structure of your document. If you need to have access to that structure, you'll either have to do it by hand or use a DOM-based parser instead. Finally, it can be a little bit unwieldy with lots of delegate methods and string validation to check for certain nodes. Using NSXML parser first requires you to have a valid XML file. In this case, I have a valid XML file that contains a video game. If I wanted to parse this document, I would first need to create an object that adheres to NSXML parser's delegate. Unfortunately, this object must be a type of NS object. Once you have your parser delegate, you'll create a new NSXML parser passing in an XML file. The initializer takes the XML as a converted NS data. Finally, you call the parse function to start the parsing process. At this point, you'll start receiving events. The first event you re will receive or that you're interested in is parser did start element. This will fire for the first video games element and next for the video game element. Being that you are entering a new video game element, you'll need to create a new video game object. Once the parser starts parsing the name as elements, it will find characters. This will fire the parser found characters event. As the parser find characters, you will save them to a temporary variable. When the parser finishes the name element, the parser did end element event will fire. At this point, you'll confirm that the parser just finished the name element and you will assign a temporary string to the actual name field. You will continue to do this until all your XML is parsed and your object is initialized. Outside of generating property lists, there's no other built-in way to create XML in iOS. While OS 10 has access to the NSXML document, that class is sadly missing in iOS. There are lots of third-party solutions out there, but probably the easiest way of writing XML is to create your own string by hand and then writing it out to disk. In this demo, I'm gonna be walking you through the process of parsing XML in iOS. And to start this off, first we're going to add an XML document. Here I have an XML document called Video Games and I'm just going to drag it into my playground here. And if I select on this, all this contains is a root node that says video games, and then it has sub nodes when each one is a video game, and each video game has a name, a genre, a rating, and a synopsis. Before we parse this document, the first thing I wanna do is create an object that will encapsulate the video games. I'm gonna create a class, and I'm simply just gonna call it video game, and it's going to implement the custom string convertible protocol. This will allow me to print out this object. I'm gonna give it a series of properties that will match up with the elements of the XML. As you can see, I've implemented the description property as required by the custom string convertible protocol, and this simply returns the name, genre, rating, and synopsis. At this point, I'm gonna build my parser now. I'm gonna create a new class, and this is going to be called game parser. And it's gonna be a type of NS object. 
The class is going to contain a few properties. The first one is the parser itself. Next, it will contain an array of games. Then it will contain some XML text, and this is text that it is currently parsing, as well as the current game that it is building as well. I'm going to provide a simple init method. And what this init method does is it takes the XML string and converts it to a data. Now we're going to create a new XML parser passing in this data. At this point now, I'm going to implement the NS XML parser delegate protocol. The protocol requires that my object be a type of NS object, which is why I made the game parser an NS object. To parse my XML, I need to implement three methods. The first method I need to implement is did start element. If the element name is a type of video game, then I know I'm working with a new video game and I'll have to create a new video game object. The next method is did end element. And this is where I've parsed my element and now I need to apply it to my video game object. The next and final one, parser found characters is when the parser is actually parsing the text within each XML node. I need to store that text within a temporary string so that I can actually apply it to my object. Let's start off first with our did start element. All I have to do is type parser and you can see we have a whole bunch of methods to choose from. Here's my did start element like so. And the first thing I'm going to do is reset my XML text to be empty. Remember, as I parse each XML node, that text is being stored in this XML text variable. Now that we're starting a new node, a new element, I want to reset that text. Next, I want to see if the element name is a type of video game. And if it is, I'm going to create a new video game object. If I open up my XML, you'll remember that a video game is this node here. Now I want to implement did end element. I will simply type parser, and you can see here I have did end element like so. The first element I'm going to check for is name. And now I'm going to set this name to my video game object. But I want to do this by calling the method string by trimming characters and set. Then I'm going to pass in an NS character set and say white space and new line characters. This will remove any carriage returns at the end of my text, as well as trim it. I'm going to do the same for genre and synopsis as well. Next, I'm going to parse the rating. The rating is a type of int. I'll convert my XML to an int and then apply that rating to my current game. Finally, the last element we're interested in is video game. When we reach the end video game element, as you can see here, when we reach this element here, this node, then we know this video game object is complete and we've successfully parsed it. First, we'll check if there is a video game, since game is an optional, and if so, we'll append it to the games array. The last method we need to implement is found characters. I'll simply write parser and select found characters. And all I'm doing is appending these characters to my variable XML text. At this point, I have my parser complete. The only thing left to do is to parse XML. I'm gonna do this within a do catch block. First, I'm going to get the URL of the XML document. 
Since this is included in my playground, I can just simply access it through the NSBundle main bundle. And I'll call the method URL for resource. Next, I'm going to instance my XML from this URL. An XML is simply a string. Once I have my XML in place, I'll create my new parser. Finally, I need to parse the XML. If I come up here, I don't have a parse method. I'm gonna create one. I'll just simply call this parse. And this method is going to return an array of video games. First thing I'm gonna do is on my XML parser is set the delegate to be myself. So the game parser is now the delegate of the XML parser. Then I'm going to have the XML parser parse by calling the parse method. And that will kick off the actual parsing of the XML document. When that's done, I'm going to return the array of video games. Remember, we created our games array up here. And this video contains a type of video game. And as we completed parsing down here, we appended the current game to this game's array. All this parse method does is return that array. Now with my new parse method, I'm going to call parse on my game parser. At this point, my games have been parsed. And now we'll print out one game at a time. If I open up my debug view here, you can see that the games are being printed out. That's it for this video tutorial. But as always, we'd like to leave off with a challenge. In your challenge, you'll be parsing some XML to produce a list of tutorials. The Challenge Playground will walk you through this process. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.